Are they are they clapping for you or me? No, they're clapping for you. Oh my goodness! Well, welcome everybody to the Two Way Street Coffee House. We've been doing this for fifty three years in this room, and uh, how many times do you think you've been here? Okay. Uh, we're a hybrid again tonight, which means you can either be here. Or you could be home in your jammies. We have a live stream and the camera's up on the ceiling there. <laughs> oh, by the way, my name is John. I always say that. My name is John. There will be a test. Thank you. We are a hardcore listening room, which means... You get one plate from me, and then I get the hook. When he's performing, 
or when I'm talking, you're listening. You're listening. <clears throat> We're an all-volunteer staff. All-volunteer staff for 53 years. Tonight we got Randy on the sound. We got uh, Tim and Jennifer pouring coffee, and my name is. John. You, you, you passed the test. <clears throat> so tonight we have Tim Grimm here. Live and on stage. I don't know if you was this. You, you think it was an accident, or they knew you were coming? <laughs> There's flyers on the table that will give you uh, an idea of who's coming here, or you can always go to the twowaystreet.org website and get that info. With all of that, Tim, are you ready? I'm ready, John. Okay, take it away, buddy. A little before, a little after It's not where you're going, it's not where you've been It's in the breath that you are holding It's in the little in between It's as you lift the brush and as you lift the hammer There's a little space and time between before and after It's the toe that touches water As the eagle starts to scream It's the penny in your pocket That started you to dream A little before A little after It's not where you go It's not where you've been It's in the red It's your It's in the little my mother came from the river, my father came from Indiana. They met on a bluff high above the Ohio River. One of them smiled, one of them saw, one of them reached, reached very far. There was the flight of Cupid's arrow in between. Before and after, a little before, a little after. It's not where you're going, it's not where you've been. It's in the breath that you are holding. It's in the little in between. There is a place that's like no other. It's between salvation and being torn asunder. It's in between the tears and laughter. It's a little before, a little after. A little before, a little after. It's not where you're going. It's not where you've been. It's in the breath that you are holding. It's in the little in between. It's in the little in between. Thank you so very much. I'm delighted to be back for my fourth, fifth, or sixth visit to the two-way street coffee house everything looks looks pretty much the same faces have changed a little bit mine has too i'm sure so uh we've all we're all in the room that's a great thing are you getting my guitar okay randy great randy's back on the board everybody and he will do a fine job for the people out in internet land too Where's the camera, Randy? Over there, okay. 
Every once in a while, if I'm looking up there, you know what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> giving them a big wink out there. My father wore his boots till his boots, they had no snow sole. Sorry about that. We've been in the city and we need to retune after we've been in the city. I for, I've not been in Chicago for a while. The traffic has changed a little bit. Not for the better though, right? <laughs> Not for the better. This little electronic tuning device says that I'm in tune, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to go with it. <laughs> My father wore his boots till his boots, they had no soul. The sides were rough and faded. And the toe might have a hole And he might replace the laces When they got too short for time And I told my dad that new boots Were the thing he should try And I put a new box On the closet shelf It held the new boots My dad couldn't bring himself To lose the old ones he said they suited him just fine. He said that holding on to old things was like a holding on to time. My father wore his boots like my father wore his clothes. My mother mended rips and my mother patched the holes. And my father had his father's tools Simple, strong, and steel. My father seldom hugged me, but I'd know just how he'd feel. And I put a new box on the closet shelf. It had the new boots. But Dad couldn't bring himself to lose the old ones. He said they suited him just fine. He said that holding on to old things was like holding on to time. He had a gift at saving money, but he was bad at spending it. But there was good food on the table for my mother and us kids. And we'd travel around this country in that old red camper bus. It wasn't things he bought us, it was the experience. Put a new box on the closet shelf. It held the new boots. His dad couldn't bring himself to lose the old ones. He said they suited him just fine. He said that holding on to old things was like holding on to time. I was thinking just this morning, I need a new pair of jeans. And I thought about my father and a lot of little things. About the day he left us, it was not quite in the fall. I remember walking through his house and taking in it all. Just inside the front door, his old boots against the wall. I opened up the closet door and This is what I saw I saw a new box On the closet shelf It had the new boots His dad, he couldn't bring himself To lose the old ones He said they suited him just fine He 
sit there holding on to old things is like holding on to time. Thank you so very much. A friend of mine grew up in uh, the hills of North Carolina. And his father was a, an undertaker, ran the local funeral home. His father really wanted him to follow in his footsteps. But my friend wanted nothing to do with that business. You know, he grew up above the funeral home. And he was itching to get out of town. But his father kept promoting him. And he told me a story about... When he was about 16, they got a new uh, hearse, 1964 Cadillac hearse. And he said, that was really cool. <laughs> and he explained how in the small towns of rural America back in those days, the hearse was also the local ambulance, which struck me as odd. It's a bit of a conflict of sorts, isn't it? You know, <laughs> Are they going to go fast or are they going to go slow, right? <laughs> So, um, so he told me this story um, about this new Cadillac hearse and, and one day that he would never forget and uh, it's called the Cadillac hearse. This Cadillac hearse has got big fins it doubles as an ambulance lights go on the seats go down we're rolling through this one horse town it's 64 it's hard on gas there ain't much it can't pass it takes a while to get her going once she's moving she ain't slow let's go boy i heard him yell put your jacket on almost fell running to the passenger side i jumped in and we took the flight with my name above the jacket pocket, we took off like a spaceship rocket, passing gas pump at Smiley's place, turned off main like we was being chased. Where are we going? I finally asked. He stayed quiet, so I asked again with his eyes locked on the horseshoe road. He said, Deep River is where we're going. Now, Deep River ain't all that deep. Most of the year, it's just a muddy creek. I couldn't think who lived down there and over rundown shacks and there do well. It's Adi Jewel, he finally said. She's having a baby. I said again, see, Adi Jewel had a mess of kids and I couldn't imagine another of them. We hit their dirt in a cloud of dust and a bunch of folks come running to us. An old man with the hickory sticking. Then there was that mess of kids. Then three big gals in summer dresses. Two lame dogs you don't want to mess with. I hopped out, rooster crowed, on his screamed, and in we go. It looked like a tobacco barn, but they'd done some work and inside was warm. Had beans cooking on the stove and bread and cooling about four loaves. We wheeled the cot through the open space to the back bedroom where Adi laid. He said, okay, now we're going to pick her up. And the next I knew they was yelling at us. He said, you can't leave without some bread. She's going to be hungry, old Hickory said. Here's a loaf for her. A loaf for you, we put the bread right next to Adi's shoes. I jumped in the back, folded down my seat. Adi started wailing and looking at me. I asked him, what am I supposed to do? He said, that stack of towels is waiting for you. He said, can you see its head? I said, yes, Dad, I did. It's a little pink dome. It's coming out. I couldn't help it. I started to shout. It's out. 
Just then we passed the four mile bridge and I wrapped towels around a little kid. I'd he got quiet, commenced to smile and she winked at me as the baby was crying. The nurse was waiting as we pulled in, held the baby up, said, it's a him. I grabbed the loaf of Adi's bread and walked it in to Adi's bed. No word was said as we drove home, took the ambulance back to the funeral home, parked it in the carport shed and ended a run I'd never forget. You see that day, I turned 16 years old, helped a baby come into this world. I got a loaf of bread, saw a lot of joy at the end of it all. Dad said, that's a good job, boy. This Cadillac hearse has got big fins. It doubles as an ambulance. Lights go on, the seats go down, rolling through this one horse town. It's a 64, hard on gas, there ain't much. It can't pass, it takes a while to get her going. Once she's moving, she ain't slow. Oh, thank you. John Pugh is my friend. John writes little, little short stories of growing up. And he handed me that story one day. I said, John, that's a song. She sits there with her hair done. Her summer dress is worn. The wind whispers through the cornfields of the day that's coming on. Thinks about her husband, thinks about their farm, and how it seemed like only yesterday her dreams had just begun. And she remembers all that went before. She remembers laughing, running through the corn. She remembers every baby being born. And him holding her late at night, dancing across the floor. She holds a box of treasures. They found as years went by rocks with holes and arrowheads feathers falling from the sky turtle shell a robin's nest wild flowers pressed and dried a simple box of memories that keeps her high and dry it's been three months and counting since her husband passed away thinks she hears him coming back a little less each day but she's got no self-pity it just might be for the best because he'd been a long time standing when they laid him down to rest and she remembers all that went before she remembers laughing running through the corn and she remembers every baby being born and him holding her late at night dancing across the floor she knows they'll soon be coming with a truck to load her things she sits there in the sunrise all alone on the porch swing her children say it's better for her to move to town and they just might be right but it breaks her heart to leave this old farm ground because this old house has been a teacher and 
This old house has been a friend It brought her here among us In the corner room upstairs If living is a memory Then all is as it was And the end is the beginning For this home, this farm, this love And she remembers all that went before. She remembers laughing, running through the corn. She remembers every baby being born. And him holding her late at night, dancing across the floor. Thank you much. So, I referenced earlier that uh, my mother came from Illinois. She was born and raised in Ottawa, where my grandfather was the school principal of the high school and also the school superintendent, Grandpa Shannon. Dad came from Indiana up north, north of Fort Wayne, a small town called Auburn. Auburn Court, Duesenberg Festival there. Cool old cars back there, the Cords, yeah. Um, but my dad's first car was a Model T. But I grew up in the hills of southern Indiana. If you know Indiana at all, uh, you know, the south of Indiana is much like the south of Illinois. It gets kind of rural and rustic and, and woodsy and hilly. So those are the hills that I grew up in. And about 10 miles from where I grew up as the crow flies, there's this place called Browning Mountain, 758 feet tall. Yeah. That's what I wanted to hear, a little enthusiasm for, <laughs> for, for one of Indiana's tallest mountains. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's ridge country there, you know. It's really steep, really steep ravines and valleys, and it's pretty country. People travel down there for, for the leaf explosion in the fall, the yellows and the oranges and the reds. It's a great place to go up to Browning Mountain to look at the leaves as they change. But you don't go up there just for that. You go up there, it's at the top of Browning Mountain are these giant stones. And these stones are about three feet tall and about three feet wide, and anywhere from seven to about 15 feet long. And there are dozens of them lying as if in rows down all the steep hillsides at the top of Browning Mountain. It is our own little Stonehenge. They have no idea when or how those stones got up there, and they're not native to the area. It's outside of a little village called Story, Indiana. And if you go to Story, there'll be a sign that says, Dead End. <laughs> go eight miles past that sign, <laughs> and you will get to the base of Browning Mountain. And I have taken people up there. If you're ever coming down to southern Indiana, to go to Bloomington or Columbus for the architecture, or Indianapolis, because you get tired of the little museums in Chicago here. Um, <laughs> uh, and you get down to, to where my neck of the woods. I'm down there sometimes. Send me a note. I've taken several people on trips up to the top of Browning Mountain and shared those stones with them. So uh, think about this. <laughs> Took you up Brownie Mountain. You did not know what you would see. Sky hung blue on Brownie Mountain. There stood the forest through the trees. We walked the path 
to some old mule train it took us back through fallen leaves it was on our way up Browning Mountain that we passed the ghosts of you and me they were dressed in plain and simple clothing they were walking down as we walked up with their arms entwined they could not see us their eyes were filled with timeless love and i took your hand in joy and sorrow we watched them fade so peacefully it was halfway there up brownie mountain touched by grace and nearly free And on Nebo Ridge, we felt the silence. And with your eyes, you questioned me. Were those the ghosts of past or future? And it's hard to know what's meant to be. It's near the edge that I stopped you. I said ahead is a mystery. Now close your eyes I know you trust me There's even more For you to see Where the view Was almost sacred Across the hill Like scattered bones these giant rocks lay in an order as if the gods played dominoes. We don't know why, when or how dear these ancient stones came here to be. But they made their bed up on Browning Mountain. Won't you rest your head on one with me? Just the sound of a lonesome sparrow And the dance of a single leaf On a sun-warm stone we lay together Sometimes the truth is a mystery anybody else get that feeling sometimes occasionally when you walk into a store where a lot of people are around and you wonder to yourself something's wrong do I need to be wearing a mask does anybody ever get that like flashback I've had that a couple times lately where I've been somewhere and I thought oh that's that's it and I breathe a little sigh of relief I realized during the pandemic when I would sit out in my cabin looking out the window um, with pieces of paper on a desk and a guitar nearby. John Prine was the first musician that I knew that went. And I, I did not really know John at all, but uh, my dear friend Jason Wilbur was his guitar player for 25 years. and. Um, I remember I heard about John's passing and I gave Jason about a week. I thought I'm sure he would be inundated and talking to lots of people and, and probably needed to process this. And I called him up 
a week later after John Prine had passed, and I said, how are you doing, Jason? And he said, I'm, I'm doing pretty well, Tim. But it struck me the other day that, that half of my life I've played guitar for John Prine, because Jason had just turned 50, and he started when he was 25 years old. And uh, that really struck me. Um, John made it into a verse of a song that I wrote called Gone. Um, but this song I'm going to do now is about three songwriters that, that, that meant a lot to me um, who all died during that period of time, not necessarily of COVID, but they all died within about a year and a half of each other. Um, they were mentors in a way, uh, craftsmen of words. Uh, they were magicians. They were, uh, you know, mystery makers. And um, I'd, I'd been able to do some shows with all of them maybe recorded a song of theirs or they'd record a song of mine, different kinds of relationships, but they were all, they all meant a lot to me. They were all that decade ahead of me. Um, the one that I'm sure you all know is Michael Smith. Um, the other ones are a guy named David Olney and uh, out of Nashville and um, out of Texas was a guy named Eric Taylor. And um, I, uh, I put this together one day just thinking about those those three great great artists that we lost, the um, the title is called "Dreaming of King Lear," and that comes from David Olney. The last time I saw David Olney was in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, and we did a show together. And we went out for a little bite before the show, and David was a guy he he'd known that I'd done a lot of theater and acting during my life, and David wanted to do more and more of that himself. He told me how. He'd been reading everything that Shakespeare had ever written, and that he was convinced that Shakespeare was the greatest writer that ever lived. And uh, he told me, and one day, Tim, I dream of playing King Lear on stage. This is called Dreaming of King Lear. <laughs> Each of you were jesters, but none of you were fools. You could sing the world its beauty by breaking all the rules. And those of us that follow you have mountains still to climb. And the path we walk is lonelier, but easier in time. Let us go to the banks of the ocean if it can happen to you it can happen to me we're headed for jerusalem tomorrow michael smith eric taylor and david only i put this pen to paper my hands on this guitar and I think of all the places we've been to near and far. And I think of all the stories that, that no one else could tell. When the lights went down in those holy rooms, you could hear it well. Let us go to the banks of the ocean. If it can't happen to you, it can happen to me. We're headed for Jerusalem tomorrow. Michael Smith, Eric Taylor, and David O'Neill. I always thought I'd tell a story with these simple cowboy chords then i share the stage with greatness i'll be grateful evermore and each of you are preachers and prophets without fear and your talismans were bottles books and dreaming of king Lear. let us go to the banks of the ocean if it can't happen to you, 
It can happen to me We're headed for Jerusalem tomorrow Michael Smith, Eric Taylor, and David Olney. Michael Smith, Eric Taylor, and David Olney. Stirring up trouble like a nest of bees. Stirring up trouble anywhere they plead. I'm wearing my black boots, you're wearing your dress. They come looking for us, we'll be looking our best. Stirring up trouble everywhere they go. Stirring up trouble in the rain and snow. Stirring up trouble. In the bright sunshine, gonna get me a fence pose with a warning sign. Anger don't come easy but when it comes to me. I can turn an eye, I can turn a cheek, but I can turn the table if it gets us down. Cause baby, you know the new sheriff's in town. Stirring up trouble without a recipe. Stirring up trouble like a can of beans. They've got the cartoons, we've got the facts. They've got the wooden spoon, but I've got the axe. Stirring up trouble like it's all a joke. Stirring up trouble with mirrors and smoke. You get the kerosene. I grab the rope, they think it's a barbecue, but I'm going baroque. Stirring up trouble, what you gonna get? Another day older and a mess of regret. They've got their screens and the internet, but I know my way through the wilderness. Stirring up trouble, such a waste of time. A waste of theirs and a waste of mine. They think their high horse will treat them fine. It'll leave them stranded with a narrow mind stirring up trouble like a nest of bees stirring up trouble anywhere they please I'm wearing my black boots you're wearing your dress they come looking for us we'll be looking our best Thank you so much. With that handy dandy clock right over my left shoulder, I can see I've got time to squeeze one more in before our intermission. And um, I guess we've got all kinds of goodies right back there, don't we? What all do we have back there? Okay. All right, there'll be a rush. If there's not a rush there. Go to the piano over here. <laughs> Some of you are old enough to still have CD players, I believe. <laughs> I, I hear some claps, yes, indeed. In your cars, in your cars maybe, right? <laughs> if you've not gotten a new car in the last seven years, you might still have a, still have a CD player. 
Anyway, we've got a box of CDs. We've got hats. We've got shirts. We've got stickers. And we've got brand new art panels, which you can see on either side of my box. That these are um, wonderful original pieces. These are my set lists from the past that Alyssa has taken and put into these trees. And I write a lot about trees. And um, um, the next album will be called The Bones of Trees. And so we've got all of these original pieces that she's done uh, with my old set lists on them. So she's continued to crank those out. Take a look at those. They're pretty cool. It's the first, very first time we've brought them out, too. So um, I will leave you with this one. Uh, this is a new song uh, uh, that came out as a single today, a folk single. Whoa. Ooh, <laughs> a folk single, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? Uh, it means that those of you uh, who, who know what a streaming device is, um, and you have one, uh, you can get this now on Spotify and, uh, and Apple Music and all those kinds of places. Um, you can find this new song. We have a very few um, uh, CD singles as well. Uh, the hard copy, if anybody really wants a hard copy of this song. Um, what else can I say? April... Uh, April 10th next week, middle of next week, we have a brand new video of this song, and we'll let, we'll let people know on my website, et cetera, that will be coming out, that we shot a video for this song. It's called Broken Truth. Here we go again Thought we'd been down that road Thought we'd left it all behind us I guess we should have known It's fight or flight It's so far from being great I can't believe that laughing fool Might lead us to our fate and Don't it break your heart Cause it breaks my heart, damn that man who tears this country apart. He's got no shame, he's got no soul, he's got no poetry inside to make him whole. When I was a kid in public school, I thought we'd learned a thing or two about the golden rule put faith in science and truth in words and acts of kindness and hope for all the world and don't it break your heart because it breaks my heart damn that man who tears this country apart got no shame got no soul He's got no poetry inside to make him whole. Sometimes we walk a thin line with our heads deep in the sand. One man's sense of justice ties another woman's hands. And the simple price of freedom to be left alone and dream is in the hands of his judges who just bend the laws and schemes. Don't it break your heart Cause it breaks my heart Damn that man Who tears this country apart He's got no shame He's got no soul He's got no poetry inside To make him whole If you follow him and you can count to seven, if you call yourself a Christian and you believe in heaven, greed, lust, sloth, pride, envy, gluttony, and wrath, it's clear as day. They storm the house. 
all the hate inside his little mouth. Damn that man. Nine years we've lived with sorrow. Nine years we shook our heads. The times they are changing. And honey in the lion's head. It's time we ring the hammer, ring them bells instead. It's time we stamp these fires out and let the peace be spread. And don't it break your heart, cause it breaks my heart. Damn that man who tears this country apart. Got no shame, got no soul. He's got no poetry inside to make him whole. We'll see you back in a few minutes. Thank you. So what a, what a great first set. We'll take a short break. Washrooms are out the door and to your left. They never start the second set till there's no line for the washroom. Other than that, uh, the, the merch lamp is lit. Kind of lit. It could be a little stronger. Um, and we'll be back in a little bit.
You guys could have the theoretically could be the number one team in the country.
Chuck Sutless, Thought FM, and he's been playing it a lot lately, even though it's almost 50 years old, so I'm hoping to catch him someday singing that song. It's kind of a long track. It is, it is. I mean, he always says, you're the cat, in time passages. He does, he, he will do the songs he has to do. Right. And then he'll pick different songs. Okay, everyone, we're going to get started again. The, li the line for the washroom has uh, come to an end. It was, I, I think we set a new record for the most people in line. Is there a prize for that? Yeah, you get to go first next time. So, uh, yeah. I don't think they're listening to me. <laughs> so, uh, great, we're going to, whoa, hello, hello. Hello. So we're going to attempt to start again. Next week on stage, from the UK, we have Zoe Mulford going to be here. So that the last time she was with us, she was at her house in the UK. And we live streamed, like on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> you know, the time difference was a little weird. We did a couple from Scotland, and they performed for like 3 in the morning for us on a Friday night. So, yeah. Tomorrow in this room, we've got Sing Around from 2 to 4. You can bring your ears, your voice, your instrument, or just plain you and listen. Uh, two to four in this room. Tomorrow night, Randy, you, you want to take the mic or you want to? All right. Okay. Thank you. Maybe a lot of you know, uh, my wife and I run the Acoustic Renaissance Concert Series over in Hinsdale, and our second to last show of the season is tomorrow. Um, there are still tickets available for Claudia Schmidt, so it's just Claudia Schmidt solo. It'll be a great show. Um, feel free to just show up and pay at the door. And, uh, yeah, it's our second to last show of the season, and we also will be announcing the upcoming season for 2024 through 2025. And back to John. 
they, that's an absolutely wonderful venue. Been there many times and uh, never disappoints. So with all of that, Tim, are you here? Oh, good. I, I saw him go out the door, and I got a little nervous. I'll tell you a story when I get up there. All right. It's about going out the door. All right. Well, then I'm going to take you, uh, take it away. Thank you, John. Lightning strike back in 47, hit a walnut tree in Indiana, in the middle of the field on the old home farm. 13 years before I was born, but my dad was there. He was just a boy, felt the thunder roll, then the hell of the noise. First the crack, then the creak and groan. There's different ways for seeds to be sown, 13 years before I was born. He was in the barn all of 11 in the year 47. It was five more years till he'd get that car, that old Model T that never went far. The tree went down by the near sheep pen. It tore the fence that the ewes are in. Dad walked out with the saw and a wire and the mud and the rain and his pocket plier. And his pa said, boy, what'd you do today? And my dad said, pa, got caught in the rain, but the cows are fed, got the eggs together, and the big tree fell, and there's wood together. It took him days to clear the limbs. He knew that job was all up to him. It was after school he'd split and stack. He didn't know then he'd get something back. Well, he got her down to one mighty log. At that point, he had to make a call. So he dialed Bill Scarlett at the Auburn Mill, said, I got a log, can you help me, Bill? And they cut that log into many board feet and Dad shoveled sawdust for about a week to pay the bill. And the job was done 13 years before I was born. And those boards were stacked and stored in the barn until the year they sold the family farm and dad counted the rings, 124. And when it comes to me, I can just remember an old stack of boards all dark and weathered, how they lay behind an old park car, that old Model T that never went far. We pumped the tires and they held air. We pulled the tea out and the boards were there. And we washed the car and we brushed the boards, cut 13 years before I was born. And my dad said, let's move these boards one more time. They're staying here in this new shed of mine. I said, dad, can you spare me two? Did not tell him what I was gonna do. Yeah, the big tree fell on my grandpa's farm and Dad saved the boards for what seemed so long, 13 years before I was born. So I drove those boards to a man named Bear near the Ohio River, south of here, and I told him the story about 13 years. He shook my hand and said, I'll give you my best. I'll build a guitar, not like the rest. Just look at that grain. You can hear the tone. From these walnut boards, so dark and long, we'll make a way to sing your dad this song. 13 years is really not so long.
Did you ever stop and wonder at the sound of distant rolling thunder? Boards from Grandpa's Walnut Tree. Lovely. Clint Bear. And then he proceeded to build a guitar for my youngest son, Jackson, a full size dreadnought guitar. So we got two guitars. If I would ever bring a board up to Lee Murdoch, I would get myself a stand that would match the guitar, but <laughs> I never seem to get that in the car when I come up here. Are you still making them, Lee? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm on my bench right now. Oh, shoot. I'm back. You're backed up, aren't you? All right, well, one of these days. I was uh, getting this uh, guitar. I, there was a verse that did not make it into the song. Uh, and, I, and I remembered this when the guitar was, was the process began of building the guitar. And um, about five years after the tree went down, they were digging a drainage tile in the adjacent field. And Grandpa was on the backhoe, and Dad and one of his brothers were watching. And... Um, the backhoe hit something really hard, and Grandpa stopped it, and he said, you boys run to the barn and get some round point shovels. And uh, they did that. They got back, and he said, now you start digging down there. And Dad said they dug for about two days. At the end of two days, they had this long trench across the field, and on the other side of the trench, out on the dirt, was an entire mastodon skeleton <laughs> outside of Auburn, Indiana. What do you do with a mastodon skeleton? <laughs> this has been in the early mid-50s. Somebody said, call the museum. So they called the Museum of Natural History here in Chicago. And they said, thank you very much for offering it, but someone has recently given us a woolly mammoth. We don't have room for your mastodon. <laughs> At which point, Grandpa said, put it in the barn. <laughs> so that mastodon sat in the barn next to these boards these dozens of boards for years and years. Eventually, they moved to Dad's shed, and then they ended up at my place. <laughs> and I realized when you're making a guitar, you've got a nut and a saddle, preferably made out of some kind of bone. And there was a little piece of one of the tusks broken off, so I took it to the luthier, and he made this nut out of mastodon, Grandpa's mastodon, to match the wood on the back of the, and the sides of the guitar. So whenever, you know, whenever the guys get around, because it's inevitably guys that, you know, talking about their instruments, their guitars, and this and that, um, you know, the women are a lot smarter. They, you know, they, they well, for a lot of reasons. But, uh, uh, but it's the guys going, yeah, my guitar, man. It's, it's got, da, 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 you know. And I'll listen to three or four of those stories, and then I'll pull this out. <laughs> then I'll tell them a little story about a guitar, you know. <laughs> you know, it's such a delight that, uh, that I'm carrying around, you know, a little bit of Grandpa in this guitar and his place and my memories of him, and Dad as well. So uh, that is a very special and unique thing to me. Bear guitar, Clint Bear. A lovely, lovely man and a lovely builder. It's raining so hard here. I can't open any doors I'm just stuck inside these four walls Wondering who this rain is for I'm stuck inside my own skin I'm stuck inside my mind Wishing how that I had held you Trying to take it off my mind 
And all I want is to be human And to walk the simple path And break the silence into laughter And then hold it in my hands Hold it in my hands Now that I'm a father, it so often breaks my heart to hear the voice of little dreamers tell me things that I forgot, things they wish and what they hope for, and how I think they cannot be. And all I want is to be human And to walk a simple path And break the silence into laughter And then hold it in my hand Hold it in my hand It's raining so hard here I can't open any doors I'm just staring at these four walls Wondering who this rain is for Maybe I am getting rusty And I just need a hand to hold Maybe I am growing stronger Maybe I am spinning gold I'm holding in my hand I'm holding in my hand It's raining so hard here It's raining so hard here Thank you very much. So you thought you were worried, John. You saw me go out of the building. John, are you out of the building? He is. He is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, will he be back? Okay. All right. <laughs> oh. Okay. Midas is that? Yeah. Um. Anyway, that reminded me of a story uh, that relates to this next song I'm going to sing. Um. My musical, uh, my, my favorite musical artist growing up when my parents had an amazing record collection. So I was born in 1960, and if you think about the music that came out in the few years before then, and the music that came out, you know, until I got to be a teenager, it was quite, quite remarkable. Um, you know, and, and my, uh, my, on my mother's side, my grandfather, who I mentioned, the, uh, the principal in Ottawa, Illinois, um, he was one of the first people to bring Pete Seeger, when Pete was blacklisted, to come and play the auditorium in Ottawa, Illinois. Um, and that was my mom's first concert was seeing Pete Seeger. And then, then the next three months later, he brought in Odetta. So that's kind of where my mom was coming from. But, you know, it was a lot of folk music. It was a lot of a little bit of bluegrass, a lot of, lot of rock and roll, broad range of rock and roll, you know. Zappa and stuff like that, you know, that I don't even really listen to. But, but, um, and Rolling Stones and of course all the Beatles stuff. So I was just, you know, steeped in all that music in our house. And it was one of those Motorola's that, you know, you could drop five, five albums at a time, you know. Um, anyway, my favorite record when I was, since I was a kid, um, was, uh, this guy looking out, squinting up into the sun, looked like a cowboy, and it was just called Jack Elliott. And um, 
Ramblin' Jack became kind of a hero of mine. I, I loved all his songs. And finally, when I was uh, about 23 or 24 years old in grad school in Ann Arbor, I, I finally got to see him at the Ark, a wonderful, great folk club, almost as nice as Two Way Street <laughs> Coffee House. Um, they've both been around about the same amount of time, though, I think. And um, it's a pretty cool thing at this point. I was, about three weeks ago, I was out in Boston and played Club Passim, which I had last played with Michael Smith years ago. And I played with my um, friend, uh, Nate Brofsky, who was in a band called Girly Man, and he played there like 20 times, so the place was just jam-packed. But, but Passim is another one of those places. Passim and, and the Two-Way Street uh, Coffee House and uh, the Ark in Ann Arbor. I saw Ramblin' Jack for the first time, and um, the next morning I went to the uh, farmer's market, which is right in the, in the alley across from the Ark, which was at that point was in a house. And uh, I got my groceries and walking down the alley, and, and I see a guy in a cowboy hat leaning against the garage, <laughs> kind of watching people go by. Nobody pays any attention to him, but I know who he is. I had just seen him. I set my groceries down and went up to him, I said, Ramblin' Jack, my name is Tim. I've been listening to you since I was a kid. It was a great show last night. And I went on and on. And I finally stopped talking. And he said, you don't have an extra bicycle, do you? <laughs> and I said, no, but I can get one. I got a bicycle. And Ramblin' Jack Elliott and I rode all over Ann Arbor, Michigan, all day long. Wow. We got done with that bike ride. And he said, you don't know where there's a swimming pool at, do you? I said, nope, but I can find one. <laughs> and we went swimming. The next time I saw him, uh, I drove out to the Newport Folk Festival in 1985, which was the first year they brought it back. It had been on a hiatus. And I showed up, and Ramblin' is there, and Arlo is there, and Tom Paxson is there, and Doc Watson is there, Judy Collins is there, Joan Baez. It, it went on and on and on. Amazing. And I went to the gate when I arrived and said, can you get a note to Ramblin' Jack? And I said, Tim, Tim's here from Michigan, <laughs> remember? And the next thing I know, they're letting me in the gate, and I am spending the whole festival with Ramblin' Jack. And we have been friends ever since. And I tell you about that story about, you know, well, he's left the building. One time, Jack was playing at the Ark, and it was a pretty good crowd, a long it, it intermission. And then Jack decided he needed an ice cream cone. <laughs> and he went out and he started, you know, with the friend and going down the street, anywhere we can get ice cream. This is during intermission. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you know, people kept telling him, not really around here. Well, where do you got to go to get ice cream, he'd say, you know? And he ended up in Ypsilanti, Michigan. <laughs> getting an ice cream cone during intermission. And the intermission was like an hour and 20 minutes long because Ramblin' Jack got ice cream. So I was just going behind the building myself here to get, get something out of the van. So, um, so I've, I've, I've had some amazing uh, travels, travels with Ramblin' Jack. And um, I last saw him during the whole pandemic. I didn't see him, and I was getting really worried because Ramblin' Jack was born in 1931, in August. So his birthday will be in August. You guys can do the math. He'll be 93, I think. I was worried in the pandemic. And um, finally, uh, I'm spending uh, about half my time up out in Oklahoma these days. And uh, there's a great club there, too, called the Blue Door. And I heard Ramblin' Jack is coming to the Blue Door. And I thought I would surprise him. And I stood waiting by the, the artist door the green door outside of the blue door. And uh, I knew he would come. Somebody would be driving him. It'd be a great big pickup truck. Some big guys would be carrying his guitar and stuff. And sure enough, that was all true. And here comes Jack, and he gets himself out of the, the truck. And I can see at a distance, you know, he looks like he's about 90. And he's moving slow, and he's kind of, he's a little fellow to begin with, but he's hunched down, and he's moving slow, and he's got his hat on. And I'm standing by the door, and when he looks up, I hold my hand out. And I say, hey, Jack. He takes his hat off, and he says, Tim! <laughs> I never thought I'd see you again. <laughs> <laughs> we 
which simultaneously broke my heart, you know, and, and made me feel just this, this immense joy. And we gave each other a big hug. And he went and did a show, had Stool on stage for him. The two guys that were, were going to play with him or try to play with him, playing with Brown with Jackie is not anything, you know, an amateur wants to do. Uh, he's got his own sense of time. And uh, <laughs> he got up on that stool and he got, somebody handed him his pick and he started, you know, kind of hit, hitting his strings. And it was a little bit rough and really loose at the beginning. But he kind of warmed himself into it. And he, he, he started to connect to people in the audience. And he started to sing, and I thought, he sounds as good as he sounded 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And his guitar playing got better, and by the third song, I just saw the years melt off him, you know? And he just kind of got younger the, the longer he played. And after the show, we went and had a great time in the green room for a long time, and it was so good to see him again. And this is a song I wrote. It took me 30 years to write it um, about Ramblin' Jack Elliott. Bob Dylan uh, when he first came to New York, thought Jack was the greatest thing he'd ever heard or seen. And he called Ramblin' Jack Elliott the king of the folk singers. My fingers are cold. Johnny Cash is dead and gone. The way fair and stranger been away too long. The contrary farmer Hitching up his mule has been a change of plans. You see, the cavalry is coming through. Someone grabbed a hammer, must have been Big John. Skinny Pete is hollering, gonna strap his banjo on. Arlo's in his teepee, playing spoons and bones. Dylan's got the scepter, but Ramblin' Jack is on the throne. Said Kerouac to Ramblin' Jack, I got something for you to hear. Come up to my place tonight for some cocaine and beer. He had a long piece of paper rolled up something like a scroll. Sit down, Jack, you're the first to hear this thing called On the Road. Jack was out in England playing on the street. Mick stood there watching, tapping both his feet. Jack jumped on his Vespa with no direction home. Mick got the boys and they started a band they call the Rolling Stones. Now here come little Bobby, got a big head. How the hell else can he sing those things he said? Got it all from Woody underneath the Christmas tree. Jack was playing Santa Claus and Bobby, he believed. Jerry Jeff was talking, said, I got a brand new song. It almost plays itself, he said, and people just sing along. You be the first to record it, Jack. Maybe you won't have to ramble. Jack just smiled, Jerry Jeff played Mr. Bojangles. Jack was at the table, sitting with Tom Waits. Some origami figures, some whiskey, and a cake. They were talking about their voices, get sometimes sore and cracked. Tea with lemon, said old Tom. Tea with lemon, Jack. Somewhere near the ocean, in a little house that's red, Jack has drawn pictures of sailboats in his head. One day he will launch that ship and sail off into the sun. Then on the beach will stand everyone he's touched by doing the things he's done. Folk singers, don't think twice. I ain't got no home. Buffalo Skinners, 912 Greens, Pretty Boy Floyd. Hard ain't it hard? 
This land is your land, Ludlow Massacre, 1913 Massacre, the South Coast. I love you, Jack. an invitation for all of you. Every year I go across the pond. I'm not talking about Lake Michigan. <laughs> the big pond. For years, uh, many years ago, a friend of mine, John Smith, the folk singer from Wisconsin, um, started a company called Inishfree Tours. And they tour Ireland, the 10 day tours. He, uh, he, he came up with this great phrase, tours for people who don't like tours. <laughs> and uh, 10 days in three different counties. Uh, Irish music most nights. It is a wonderful way to experience the Emerald Isle. And then just a few years ago, um, I took that idea. I still work for John's company, but I took that idea and created a similar thing in Scotland. And I find Scotland to be one of the most amazing and beautiful places in the world. So every year I do one or two tours myself, and we're up to about 20 tours with different American and Canadian singer-songwriters. And it's called Scotland Folk Tours. So I invite each and every one of you to join me this summer or next on a tour of Scotland for 10 days or 14 days. You're coming. You're coming. We've got people here. Ed, I know, Ed's maybe thinking about it. Yep. I'm hoping so, you guys back there. We've got people who have been with us before. Um, yeah, so you guys could, uh, you guys, everybody s come to this table and talk to our, to our people who've been there before. Anyway, we've got brochures um, up uh, by the table there for Scotland and Ireland. Think about joining us. If you don't have your summer plans for this year, come this year. Otherwise, come next year. I stopped by your house I was in your town Boats were on the water Sun was coming down And I was on a bicycle Your name was on the door I hadn't thought of you in years I didn't know what was in store didn't know what was in store The stairs are steep and narrow And the rooms are still the same The pictures on the wall there gave you hope For better days When all the doors are locked at night And the light is sinking low And you remember softly the grace of letting go The grace of letting go You're smiling in your photograph You're wearing your white dress There's something in the distance That hasn't gotten to you yet If Jesus died for all our sins And you did too Walking through your house today, your spirit shining through. I am one of many who have come to say hello. Imagining your shadow in the highest street window. Light came from the attic. And your friend, a chestnut tree And you lived behind a bookcase In a world of faith and dreams In a world of faith and dreams And your father's words remind us That your work is 
never done and on these streets of Amsterdam yellow stars have come and gone you have made this world so beautiful like these tulips in the spring and I dearest I your gift it makes me sing your gift it makes me sing you're smiling in your photograph you're wearing your white dress something in the distance hasn't gotten to you yet if Jesus died for all our sins and you did too walking through your house today your spirit shining through Standing in the silence And you made me cry Remembering the words you wrote And how you lived and died Hope had left the station But the train was still on time Remembering the words you wrote Your memories are mine Your memories are mine you're smiling in your photograph You're wearing your white dress Something in the distance Hasn't gotten to you yet If Jesus died for all our sins And you did too Walking through your house today Your spirit shines Spirit shining through Thank you so much. That's one of the uh, the beautiful things about travel for me. I've been going over for a few years. Um, I tour the Netherlands and Germany every year. And I remember the first first couple of years I went, you know, people said, you gotta go to the Anne Frank house, you know? And I walked by it and there was a line and it took three or four years before I, you know, got myself into that line and walked through that house. And that's the kind of thing that, 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 um, that kind of experience and just being in place because you're traveling can lead to, you know. And I just went right home and wrote that down. Um, I'm going to do a couple of, uh, of new songs for you. Almost fresh off the presses. You write a song, then you got to edit the song. Ideally, you edit it, and I think editing is important. Then you got to learn the song, <laughs> right? <laughs> And some of them, you know, you, they just they just come, and others it just it takes a long time to learn your own new song, you know, to get get the the nuances down and and remember the words. Remember the words. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided that you know there are a lot of people that are in my generation um, out doing this, and um, uh, uh, I know John Gorka a bit, and and I know that maybe two or three years ago. John used to do requests at shows, you know, you could tell him at before the show or intermission and he would try to do it if he could fit it into a set. And now he says, you've got to email me about two weeks ahead of time <laughs> if, if you want me to try to do a song that I've not done in a long time, you know. Anyway, so we're going to do a couple of new ones. This one's called uh, Getting Older. I was walking in Asheville on a cold winter's day. I heard bits of music slowly coming my way. 
was a man on his bike in a boombox that played. He had veteran stickers, his own slow parade. And his head was bowed down, his hands were in fists. His face was a curtain to the life that he'd missed. And the song was an anthem. Democrats don't deserve Christmas. And I smiled at his anger. He was hard to resist. We're all getting older. We all carry scars. Something cut us too deeply. Something hit us too hard. We roll with the punches. Try to stay on our feet. With our hearts in our pockets. And our hands to the heat. I knew an old timer. Walked out in the woods Was the age of my father If my father still stood He just crossed the creek Then the forest began Deep in the back forty Had a saw in his hand Nobody knows Nobody sees how long he lay lying beneath that old tree. He just buried Shirley the summer before. He held on to her memory as a helicopter roared. Said, I can't feel my legs. The rest of me feels fine His last breath was the moment They touched down from the sky We're all getting older We all carry scars Some cut us too deep Something hit us too hard So we roll with the punches Try to stay on our feet With our hearts in our pockets And our hands to the heat I spoke with a wise man who studied the stars Black holes and dark matter And the reasons we are He sat in the silence Like an old wooden chair And he stared in the distance And in the distance he stared Then he rose with a question and he asked it of me Why do we hold in our hands Such a small little screen We stare down into it Like a magical glass And the things that we miss They will never come back When I look at the sky Birds in the trees In the life that can be It's gone in a moment It's out in a breath We think there's more time But this is all that we get We're all getting older we all carry scars Some cut us too deeply Something hit us too hard We roll with the punch Try to stay on our feet 
With our hearts in our pockets And our hands to the heat She's up in the attic, she's been there for years. Breeze through the window helps dry the tears. She's never hungry, she stays so still. Waits with the grace of her father's will. And in her father's heart, in her father's hands put the world in a bottle on his old nightstand there was no one else who could dream like him but breathe with the sun and the moon and the wind and only once or twice he'd forget something how a flash of light left a hole in her way. There's a chair and a table and a wooden box. And in a distant corner lies a broken clock. From the bones of trees in a craftsman's hands, guitars and ships and mandolins, guitars and ships and mandolins, and her father's heart and her father's hands. And put the world in a bottle on his old nightstand. There was no one else who could dream like him Or breathe with the sun and the moon and the wind And only once or twice he'd forget something How a flash of light left a hole in her Angel waits at the top of the stairs. Seems to me she's always been there. She knows all our hearts, she can't help but cry. Closes her eyes and dreams of the sky. Late at night, her heart still sings. She says no one knows what time may bring. Told me once she didn't need a thing. There's just enough room for her folded wings. you all are regulars coming every week aren't you oh no there's good music in here every week keep supporting this place and places like it we need this live music we need people together and safely in small spaces you know being communal and all that community
All right. I'll close this with this one. This is a song I wrote um, many years ago. Maybe some of you in this room saw the original stage production of The Grapes of Wrath. Anybody? At the Steppenwolf Theater. Michael Smith was deeply involved in that with music. And uh, Frank Galati created it and directed it. Um, it went to Broadway. And then it wasn't produced for a while. Grapes of Wrath is a tricky play to put on stage. You need about 20 plus actors. You need a rainstorm on stage. You need a river on stage. Ideally, you have a Model T truck that moves across the stage a few times. There are technical difficulties. So subsequently, it's not been done a lot, but um, 20 years ago, uh, the Indiana Repertory Theater, the State Theater in Indiana, decided they had a relationship with Frank, who'd done it, and um, Frank's partner brought him in. We brought him in to, uh, to direct that, that show, and um, we did it, mounted a production, and it was a lovely production. We did that for a couple of months, and then we moved it to Syracuse Stage in New York, and then we took a couple of years off, and we moved it to Sarasota, Florida, for the State Theater there. Um, this is a song that I wrote for that production. And in, in many ways, here in the States, I mean, this is about the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma and the people trying to get to California and the difficulties that they faced and the challenges and uh, how we treat people of, uh, of a different ilk. So I will leave you with this one. Thanks again, everybody. It's called The People's Highway, uh, which is what um, they called it back then, Route 66. <laughs> Sixty six Will Rogers Highway down sixty six people go from the back roads out of the dust bowl. We're all rolling in search of home. Some people walk, some people stumble, some people drive their fancy car, some people ride. Westbound freight train Folks are coming From near and far We don't want Your handouts, mister We don't want No charity we want to work Stay together And pick the fruit Land of the free I was born in Oklahoma to California. I will go. They tracked it up. 10,000 families from the homes they'd always known. And they fill in wells, knock down buildings. They said, be gone. We're through with you. Our people worked this land from nothing back to nothing it's going to we don't want your handouts mister we don't want no charity want to work stay together and pick the fruit land of the fruit We got old folks, we got children, we got lovers hand in hand. We're all traveling this crowded highway in search of justice in a promised land. We don't want your handouts, mister. We don't want no charity. Want to work, stay together. Pick the fruit, 
land of the free. Pick the fruit, land of the free. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Come back again. There's John. I'll tell you a story later, John. Okay. Uh, but, but don't go too far. We talked about this. No, I don't think so. Anyway, next week, Zoe Mulford on the stage. But for the regulars who know this, they know what I'm going to say. No one gets out of this coffee house without an encore. Just, just, just by chance. As Woody Guthrie said, it's on the record. <laughs> All right. But Do you have you. one more? Thanks for asking. I was thinking about this song at intermission. It's not on. It's not on my fancy dancy um, set list. But I was thinking about it because, you know, when I moved. Uh, so I lived in Chicago for a while. Um, I moved here in the kind of mid late '80s, and got involved with uh, the Old Town School of Folk Music back when it was still on Armitage, and um, and I, you know, took took some about five guitar classes you know i thought at least i got to do something with my fingers instead of just hit the guitar all the time so uh, there's a wonderful um, woman muriel anderson who is a remarkable guitarist of course so muriel was my guitar teacher for a while and i, I did run into her a few weeks ago um, at the international folk alliance in uh, in kansas city and i reminded her that i was a former student and it was quite nice to see her but anyway um I started to uh, play guitar a bit more, you know, from the cowboy chords. I learned, I, l I knew three chords, now I know six. <laughs> so, um, and the cape with the capo, you know a lot more than that. So, um, you know, I consider myself a songwriter, and this is a prop, okay, <laughs> sort of. Um, but in any case, um, I began to write songs when I was in Chicago, at, at, and I began to do, Mark Dvorak was running the open mics back then, and you know, said, Tim, you know, I've heard a couple of your songs come up, and you know, so I started to get a little role uh, of writing and, and getting playing in front of people. Um, and anyway, this was one of the, f the, one of the early songs that I wrote. It's the, the early song that I still play. I still play on occasion, and it comes from my mother. My mother worked in a high school for kids who could not cut it in a public school system. And, um, and uh, when, when I grew up and went back to town, a lot, of, a lot of people would come up to me as I'm walking around town or in the Kroger store, and they'd say, are you Beth Grimm's son? Because she was my teacher, and you tell her she made a big difference in my life. And I would go back and tell mom those stories, and you know she just got, got a real thrill. So this is an entirely true story, song, but it's not about me. Remember that as I'm doing it. <laughs> They've been walking through the shopping mall, bored with all the shops. So they wandered round the parking lot to see what had been parked. There were cars of every color, cars of every size. They didn't care what car it was as long as it could drive. And there was $300 in the glove box, full tank of gas by the gauge, a complete 
set of keys dangling within reach. The recipe for the perfect getaway. Why don't we go to California? So they headed down the road to Tennessee. Three Hoosier juvenile delinquents, each of whom had failed geography. There was Chili at the wheel. Joe Hawk was by his side, but between the both of them sat Darla Sue McBride. Chili was the oldest, nine months and 14 days until his 16th birthday on the day of this getaway. When they pulled into Nashville, they thought they were doing fine. They just followed the golden arches right down Highway 65. Just a little pit stop, stayed at the budget inn. As soon as they smelled daybreak, they hit the road again. Why don't we go to California? In two days' time, they crossed the Jersey line. Three Hoosier juvenile delinquents with nothing too substantial on their minds. Well, Joe Hawk didn't say much. He thought he was going to die. He discovered motion sickness somewhere back on 65. So his head was out the window, maybe half the day. Chili's heart did not go out to Joe Hawk in this way. And Chili was getting antsy. Darla was getting tired with her hand upon the radio. She kept the volume high. Now, there are parts of Newark you really shouldn't go after dark with Hoosier plates blaring country radio. Another life experience slapped them in the face on an unlit street of unexpected faces filled with hate. But this night they were lucky and Chili's pedal hit the floor. Joe Hawker rolled the window down, got sick again once more. He said, I've had enough of this. I'm going home. And Darla said to Chili, let's find a telephone. Why don't we go to California? At the crack of dawn, they met the Vermont sun. Two Hoosier juvenile delinquents. They were trying to figure out if this was fun. Well, Darla, she was resting, laid out in the back seat, and she didn't see the highway curve when Chili fell asleep. But they woke to bright lights flashing, Chili by her side in the back of a state trooper car being told of their rights. And back home in Indiana, this story, it was told by Joe Hawk to his classmates of adventures on the road. Chili's teacher said to him, we're glad you're back in town and that's really quite a story. You should try and write it down. Chili said, you think so? And she nodded, then he paused. Gosh, maybe my life's better than I ever thought it was and there was three hundred dollars in the glove box full tank of gas by the gauge a complete set of keys dangling within reach recipe for the perfect getaway why don't we go to california why don't we go to california why don't we go to California? Thank you all so much.